We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton. To my left sits Jerem Jordan. And to Jerem's left now sits the new interim head baseball coach of BYU. Uh, yeah, the Batcats, I should say, Trent Pratt. Trent, welcome to Studio B. What's up, Trent? Uh, How you guys doing? First Great. of all, congratulations on a huge series win at Nebraska during an emotional time. That was really big-time baseball by your guys. Yeah, it was fun. Um, we were talking earlier, I don't think I've ever been a part of four one-run games like consecutively ever in my career, coaching or playing. So it's even better when you win three of them. So yeah. that I'm is, glad that happened. Was that good for that your is. heart? I mean, to begin that way? <laughs> <laughs> it was good when it was over. I know that for sure. Um, during, I mean, it was fun. Um, it, was, it was a good field. Um, thank goodness I have my, the coaching staff around me to help because it's not a one-man show, that's for sure. Uh, we need, you know, Coach Herring and those guys or um, Tuckett Slade and Noah and Michael Bradshaw. It's, Man, it's a team effort for sure. It's a really good staff, and it needs to be because obviously last week the news came out, Mike Littlewood resigned for personal reasons. Mm -hmm. What was that day like, and uh, what was the reaction from the staff? Um, it, it was shocking, for one. Um, didn't really see it coming. So that, that was shocking, and addressing the team and, and some of the questions they had. And, you know, we just support Coach Littlewood and, and his decision and, and, and just move forward. And that's kind of what we talk about as a team is like, hey, this is kind of where we're at right now, and we kind of have two choices. So, I mean, you've been one of his assistants for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You're very close with him. Um, what did you learn from him that's helping you transition into this new spot that's at the top of the list of, of things that, you know, Mike kind of helped you grasp onto? Yeah. Thing is, I mean, you know, you guys know him. He's a perfectionist, like yes. attention to detail. He, he does a great job at that, and that's something that I know I need to improve on. My role is always kind of like, Hey man, I was the base, I was in the cages, you know, kind of the grunt worker more or less. <laughs> and so now being on the, on the other side, there's some things that I'm realizing that, man, that I, I need to get better at and improve. And like I said earlier, it's, it's not just me. Luckily that, you know, me and Coach Herring have been together for 14 years as well. And he deserves a lot of this credit as well, you know, going forward, you know, his recruiting and the team we have. It always helps me have really good players. Let's mm -hmm. put it that way. Yeah. Um, you don't win without good players. And so, Thank goodness for all those things. Um, thank goodness for some some key hits late last weekend that helped you know that transition a little bit. Yeah. You mentioned with the team, you're saying there were two choices. What mm -hmm. were the two choices? Man, we can feel sorry for ourselves and feel sad, or we can say this is this is this is the hand we're dealt right now, and and we can turn it loose and have a great time the rest of the season, and and put this thing together and and go have some fun and win a bunch of ball games. And they rallied to win three one-run games. That's incredible, and especially bouncing back from a one-run, uh, one-zero loss. Yeah, that's a tough one because defensively you're like, "Hey, one run, that's amazing." Yeah. We didn't score a run, but then you win the next three. What did it take to do that? Man, it was, it's a team effort. I mean, we used a lot of guys. Obviously, our pitching staff was unbelievable, and all three, all three of those were comeback wins too. Um, we got down in all of them. It's just a credit to our players more more than anything else. Is man, they just kept playing hard. We kind of talked that before. Before the game, the first night was tough. The wind was blowing. The wind blowed every day. But we just talked, hey, it doesn't matter if we get hits, what it is. It's about, man, being tough and making the pitchers really work. And we got some guys on base, and, and we got some big hits. That's one of the things we track is, hey, what do we do when guys are in scoring position? Because I think we, we didn't hit very good on the weekend as far as having overall hits. But we got big hits when it mattered. And that's, I guess, how you win baseball games sometimes. Interim head baseball coach Trent Pratt is with us on BYU Sports Nation. I'm gathering that you've been so busy, you haven't had time to scour through Twitter. But so <laughs> I'll just update you. I mean, the support for you has been pretty overwhelming from former players, current players, and whatnot. Um, how have you felt that, uh, if at, at all? Have you been so just like in the moment that you haven't thought about that? Or are you feeling that right now? Um, I haven't looked at Twitter a ton. When it all happened, I was like, man, I, I try to just stay off social media. But I've got a lot of texts from former players, um, coaching friends, and everyone. And it feels great to have the support, to have former players reach out and say, hey, man, I, I love that you're there. You're going to do a great job. It helps me have a little confidence because when it hit, it's like, oh, man, can I really do this? Like, am I ready for this? And to have people tell you you're ready and, hey, just be yourself and go get it, man, it, it means a lot to have that type of support. How are you managing the stress of this? Because let's be honest, this is a debut for the head coaching job as well, but also you want to win right now with this group this year. We just talked about it. it's about right now. Um, we start worrying about the future, you're going to get in trouble. Our job, we told our players, that was one of the things we talked about is, hey, our job is today. We're going to go practice our tails off today and get better. When tomorrow comes, we're going we're to wake up, we're going to worry about that day. Um, so that's kind of this, how this team's thinking. That's how I'm thinking is, man, we're just going to worry about what do we have to do today to win a game or what do we have to do a day of practice to get better? And then, man, whatever happens at the end of it, 
it's going to work out as supposed to. Well, things uh, certainly don't lighten up. I mean, you've won six of seven. Now you get Utah in mm -hmm. the rivalry, and we pointed out earlier uh, the first game between BYU and Utah ended in a scoreless brawl, which is <laughs> I'm kind of hoping for that tonight. I'll be the, honest. It's the perfect way to start that rivalry <laughs> in baseball. Uh, what do you know about the Utes, and what's the what's the game plan to attack them tonight mm -hmm. and try and make it seven wins in eight games? Uh, Utes are playing good right now, coming off a big what, won a series against Arizona, so. Man, we're gonna, we don't really worry about the other opponent as much. We're going to worry about us. Um, we'll run four or five guys out there on the mound tonight, um, save some arms, make sure we have enough arms for the weekend. But, man, we're just going to go compete, compete hard and, and be tough and hopefully come out with a win tonight. Another question, uh, I guess, about Mike. You've known him for a long time, right? He, he identified yeah. you as kind of a prospect in, in, like, high school or something? It's been a long time, and then you coached forever together? Yeah, it was a crazy story. I was in eighth grade playing on – like a trout for a travel team and I was a shortstop for third baseman and they asked is anyone here ever caught before because I guess the catching wasn't very good I go I've caught before and they kind of tease me like well where don't you play and they stuck me back there and him and um coach Cramblett and Bob Kyes said hey there's a lot of guys who can play shortstop but not many guys can catch like that like you should really consider like being a catcher and so I guess I have them to thank for my playing career as far as like making a position change because wow as a catcher, I wouldn't be able to play as long as I did and play, play professional baseball as a shortstop. When I got there, I got to college, I'm like, yeah, I'm not as good as the other shortstops. I had no chance. But as a catcher, I was okay. And, and then you uh, – so he IDs you, but then you're on his staffs forever, right, at Dixie and uh, BYU yeah. and everything? Yeah, we kept in touch. Um, after I had signed a minor contract with the Phillies, me and my wife had bought a house in St. George. And so I was able to work out there. My little brother actually played for him at Dixie. So I was able to work out there in the offseason. Um, when I got released – he said, hey, if you want to help me coach, I'd love to have you. I can pay for your school. And then I finished school, and he goes, a position where he goes, hey, if you want that position, man, it's yours. There you go. And so I have a lot to thank to Coach Littlewood as far as coaching career goes. Um, I knew when I, when I got done playing coaching, something I always wanted to do. And, man, he gave me an opportunity to do that. Now, let's stay with the backstory. Where were you when you received that call and you said you got released? What was happening in your professional career when you made the transition to coaching? Like, originally? Yeah. I, I was living in St. George. I just got released. Um, like that spring training, I came home and I was driving a delivery truck um, <laughs> for my wife's cousin. I was delivering like toiletry supplies all over U Southern Utah County, driving up to Zion, different gas stations, just covering the whole valley. This is what, this is what baseball players, <laughs> real baseball players do, I man. I think you made a mistake. You should have stuck with that. <laughs> I, will, I was a great delivery driver. I'll, I will say that. <laughs> um, so from there, I, I need to finish school. And so I talked to him and he said, hey, man, I can pay for your school if you want to help. So, man, we, I just had twin daughters. My wife had started a volleyball club. I, was, I, would, I also um, wiped off cars at Fabulous Freddy's in St. George. I worked there for a couple of years. I know the place. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, so that was kind of the story. And then a job opened up, a full-time job. And I took that job. My wife was still running her volleyball club. She was actually, before we moved up from my wife was actually the head coach, volleyball coach at Dixie College for a year mm. until, you know, Mike was, I was fortunate enough to Mike asked me to come up here with him when, when this opportunity arised. And sometimes he would go ref games, and you would be the interim head coach, right? Yeah. So this isn't the first time you've sort of done this, right? Hopefully my record here is as good as it was at Dixie. I think I was like like 18-1 and one or something like that. So <laughs> hopefully I keep that rolling now. That's awesome. Oh, you're off to a good start. Yeah. <laughs> you win a three or four at Nebraska. Is, is it weird coaching third now? I coached third. Now I went in the dugout last weekend. Oh, oh sorry. Okay, yeah. I was coaching the transition, third, right? like the end of last year into this year. And then yeah. I was like, man, I'm going to go in the dugout and – yeah. If I need to make a pinch hit or something like that, I feel sure. more comfortable being able to see guys and talk to you guys. Yeah, so yeah. we'll see how it works. So what's the biggest change in your day-to-day -day, uh, moving into this new role? Coming on Sports Nations 1. <laughs> I think I've been here one time before. <laughs> um, lucky you! Seriously, it is lucky me. Um, the baseball side's the same. That's what I told our players. Hey, just because whatever, I have some interim tag, I'm, I'm the same guy. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be any different. That, that This is who I am. Things aren't going to change. Um, the day-to-day -day stuff is, you know, Duff, um, media things, things I didn't know Coach dealt with a lot, those small things, doing those things. Um, that's been the biggest thing. Once we get on the field, man, baseball is baseball. Um, and I, that's where I feel most comfortable, honestly, right now. So I'm glad that we had, like, a short week and got on the road and got to play some games. We have to ask you before you go, will that epic mustache ever return? Man, there's a chance. <laughs> my my five-year-old son, he wasn't around when I had it. Or he saw pictures like, Dad, are you ever going to grow that mustache back out? And I'm like, 
I don't know, but it was pretty good. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Seriously. It was amazing. It, it was Magnum. P Magnum PI was jealous yeah. of that mustache. I wasn't even mad. I was actually impressed. <laughs> yes. yeah. If it's needed, it'll come back for sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Trent, great to have you with us. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma for the game against Utah tonight. Yeah, Thank good luck rolling. tonight. Then Appreciate we'll, it. Um, then we'll see you against San Diego this weekend. Yeah, yeah let's Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. Let's, let's do it again. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you guys.